Welcome to the Science of Academic Success. Have you ever had a time where you put effort towards studying for an exam but then didn't get the grade you had hoped you would get? In this video, we're going to discuss how to apply the science of learning in order to help make our studying efficient and effective. This is part one of a two-part video discussing how to improve our studying. In this first video, we'll cover some of the foundational components of effective studying. Then in part two, we'll dig a bit deeper into the research to examine some really effective techniques that we can add on top of what we'll be covering here. We have to start with one of the more well-known keys for successful studying, distributed learning, also known as spaced learning. An extensive body of research here overwhelmingly supports the practice of spreading out our study periods, rather than studying for an equivalent amount of time all in one session. So rather than studying four hours of a single subject in a single evening, spread your studying out into four one-hour sessions across four days. Distributing our learning in this way facilitates the learning process and aids memory or recall later, such as when you would like to remember something during an exam. One of the reasons why this works is because each time we return to studying the material, there is a bit of a refresher of the already studied material while we are also learning the new material. It's similar to walking across a field of grass. If you walk across it once, you likely won't be able to see your tracks in the grass. But if you walk across that same path repeatedly, you'll create an imprint in the grass, and later on when you're looking for it, you'll be able to find that path again. Now, in order to be able to do this, we need to be proactive in our studying. This means that you have to make plans to study in advance and not leave all of your studying for the night before the exam. That sounds pretty obvious, yet we often struggle to do this. To help you motivate yourself to plan for incorporating distributed learning into your studying, remember the fact that this is a well-researched key for successful studying. Use a calendar and book your study times into your calendar. To go further with this idea, if you're trying to study for multiple exams, the research on distributed learning indicates that studying one subject for a long period each day isn't effective. Instead, the research supports the idea of studying each subject for a shorter period of time across multiple days. Another key for successful studying is to focus your attention while studying. The research on multitasking is pretty clear. We do not perform well at a task when we are distracted. We are less efficient when we try to multitask. This applies to our study spaces as well as to our learning in the classroom. For your study space, ensure to remove any distractors. Put your phone out of sight and anything else that might distract your attention. In addition, it is helpful to have a dedicated study location. Studying in your bedroom is not ideal because there are often too many things that are competing for your attention, i.e. the bed. If you don't have a dedicated study space at home, then you might want to consider going to the library for your study time. We also want to work on training our ability to engage in focused attention. Just like getting exercise, we can also exercise our ability to focus our attention. One way to do this is through an easy method called the Pomodoro Technique, developed by Francesco Cirillo. The name of this technique comes from a timer in the shape of a tomato, a pomodoro, that we would use to time the cooking of pasta. In this studying technique, we set the timer for 25 minutes, and during this 25-minute period, we engage in focused studying. When the time is up, we set the timer for five minutes and we allow ourselves five minutes of a mental break, no studying. When that five minutes is done, we are back to 25 minutes of focused studying. Repeat this until you've reached your study goal for that session. As we develop our ability to engage in focused attention, we can increase the length of the study time, 25 to 30 to 35 minutes, etc. The key is to be focused and on task during the study time, while also providing ourselves with some mental downtime where maybe we grab a snack or check our email. Just don't forget to set that five minute timer for the breaks. Using this sort of technique would allow us to get through a longer period of sustained study time, because during this time we are giving ourselves an opportunity for a mental cool down. Another key for effective studying is to use active study techniques and avoid passive techniques. When reading material, uh, avoid merely highlighting or underlining content in the text. These are very passive ways of studying. Uh, 
And although reading the material is a necessary part of the studying process, avoid going back and merely rereading the material, which is another passive technique. There are a number of ways to actively engage with your study material. We're going to get more specific in a moment, but these include things such as writing the material in your own words or anything where you are creating, writing, processing, elaborating, or quizzing. Okay, let's get specific. You may have heard of the SQ3R technique, sometimes also called the SQ4R technique, originally developed by Francis Robinson. The core components of this method are consistent with what the research indicates to be effective study practice. And a 2009 study of this method by McDaniel and colleagues is a good example of the sort of research evidence demonstrating the effectiveness of this studying technique. The acronym SQ3R stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recite, and Review. Before we start reading, we should begin by taking a quick survey of the material that we're going to be studying. This means that we should skim the headings of the chapter to see the big picture in the material. When doing this, we want to be looking at the headings and subheadings to see how the various topics are related to each other, noting that some topics will be presented as subcomponents of a larger idea, and also noting where some topics may be presented as similar or contrasting ideas to other topics. This helps us build a structure, a framework for the material that we are about to be reading. While you are surveying, turn the headings into questions. This will help you to see the content as answers to your questions, which will help you better assimilate the textbook's content with your already existing understandings of the world. The key here is that you've created questions. And then when you start reading the text, you are reading with a purpose to answer those questions. This act of pre-testing, where we ask questions about the content before we have read the text, is an effective learning technique that enhances the subsequent learning of the material. Now, now we're ready for the first R, reading the text. The key for effective reading is to be actively questioning the ideas as you're reading. So as you're reading the material, ensure to make use of the questions you had generated in the previous step. In addition, at the end of every paragraph, stop and ask yourself what the book's authors were trying to communicate to you with that particular paragraph. In most of the paragraphs, the authors will be trying to communicate some idea to you. It might be a definition, an application, a list of concepts, or it might be an elaboration of an earlier idea. You want to ensure that you understand the concept that the authors are communicating before moving on to the next paragraph. As you are reading, you should be making study notes, and it is essential that you don't just copy the textbook. Copying is a very passive technique. Your study notes need to be written in your own words. Write the ideas in your own words. You can even use pictograms and flowcharts, anything that gets you to interact with the content in some sort of active way. The second R in the SQ3R sometimes stands for retrieve, uh, but in the SQ4R version, this is sometimes separated into recite and reflect. In this stage of the studying process, we want to play with the ideas we've just learned. Think about examples where we could apply the concepts that we had studied, including how the ideas may apply to our own lives. Reflect on how the new material fits or doesn't fit with what we had previously known and engage in some self-quizzing where we put our notes away and try to test our ability to remember the details of the material. The final R stands for review. At this point, we want to think back on what we've learned. Does it all make sense? Did we answer all of our questions? Do we understand how all of these components fit into the framework that we identified when we first surveyed the chapter? Another effective studying technique that you can enact at this point is to construct your own sample exam questions. Good exam questions are difficult to generate, but trying to do this is an effective way to study. It's forcing you to think about the content in a way that is similar to how you'll be thinking during the exam. Now embedded within this SQ3R discussion were a few really valuable studying techniques that I want to highlight to make sure that we see how to implement these evidence-based success factors into our own studying. You can find this part of the discussion in part two of this video. Thanks for watching.